the crazy thing is about 96% of the population actually fits into that standard range. And I think we can all agree that 96% of the population isn't healthy, right? You are listening to the Wealthy Woman Podcast, and I am your host, business coach, and wellness mentor, Dr. Michelle. And my mission is to teach conscientious women entrepreneurs how to create a life full of health and wealth from the inside out. In this podcast, you'll learn how to elevate your health and implement business strategies so you can awaken your inner power, show up more confidently, and focus on what really matters sharing your gifts, better serving your clients, and showing up even more for the people you love. This is today's successful woman, the wealthy woman. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Wealthy Woman Podcast. This is part five of the Creating Abundance in Your Business series, and I'm super excited about today's episode because it's all about functional lab testing, which is really at the core of what I do and what will be your secret weapon to expanding and maintaining your success long term, okay? So I have a question for you. Have you ever had your annual labs done? and then thought it was a total waste of time? (laughs) Or have you had a doctor order a bunch of tests, but then not actually take the time to go through them with you or give you correlating action steps that made sense? (laughs) If so, you are not alone. So today's episode, I'm going to give you the scoop on my favorite tests and you are going to know why they're essential and you're going to feel really confident that you're in the know, especially next time you talk to your provider, okay? So what is up with functional testing and how is it different from your regular doctor's orders, right? So first, let's take a moment to address the regular labs. So these labs tend to be ordered at your annual physical and are very, very limited. They're meant to rule out any major chronic diseases or other diagnoses that might warrant a pharmaceutical, right? These tests might include a complete blood count, like a CBC, a chemistry panel, chem panel, right? A lipid or cholesterol panel, and possibly a urinalysis. At most, they're screening for anemia, diabetes, and high cholesterol, and then you are sent on your way. If you have symptoms that you know, your doctor finds interesting, they might throw in a few more tests there. But the thing is, though, you know, conventional medicine, conventional medical doctors only look at standard ranges, which are based on a bell curve average. So (laughs) the crazy thing is about 96% of the population actually fits into that standard range. And I think we can all agree that 96% of the population isn't healthy, right? So Back to functional labs, the term functional is really just referring to the fact that you can apply it to your life, plain and simple. Functional medicine is a way to utilize medicine that is actionable and actually promotes health and wellness. For example, with blood work, like I just mentioned, you know, first off, I would order quite a bit more labs to get a really complete view of what's going on with your physiology. And then on top of that, I wouldn't just settle with standard ranges, right? I would actually look at optimal ranges, which tend to be more narrow and actually give me a much better idea of certain trends or tendencies that your like your body might have towards various imbalances. So I call this functional blood chemistry analysis, which I've specialized in now for over five years. And functional labs can also go way beyond blood work. So we can actually look at complete hormone pathways and we can look at your 24-hour adrenal function and we can look at a comprehensive stool analysis and a food sensitivity test and cellular function and detox pathways and functional genomics, right? We're going to go over all of these today. And these tests are invaluable, especially when it comes to really understanding your body and what's going on, both for your own sake and to help your practitioner 
provide you with a plan that they can confidently support and guide you through, right? If you think about it, how can a doctor or other practitioner give you sound guidance without being fully informed on how your body is operating under the hood, right? That's why I always say test, don't guess. It is my motto and it's something I stick to like so passionately in my practice. So Let's start going through the tests. So let's start with a functional blood chemistry analysis or, you know, what I call it, my loving pet name is the FBCA, okay? So this is the blood work that I run that is in stark contrast to the few markers your doctor orders at your annual physical, if they order any at all, right? (laughs) Sometimes they don't order anything, which blows my mind. Anyway, so I run... 27 tests that actually contain 126 biomarkers and that gets a really good look under the hood. Sometimes depending on family history or personal health history, we might add some additional markers on there. So I look in depth at blood sugar regulation, liver function, gallbladder function, kidney function, cellular electrolyte balance, proteins, minerals, vitamins, iron levels, advanced cholesterol markers. I look really in depth at the thyroid, including those markers needed to catch autoimmune processes like Hashimoto's. Also inflammatory markers and immune function markers. So this is a great test to get done annually so you have a really good pulse of what's happening in your body, right? So if you want a full list of the markers that I order, which I'm happy to share with you, I will. Um, I have a guide and I will go ahead and link to that in the show notes for you. All right, so let's talk about my favorite comprehensive stool analysis next. It's called the GI map. Now I did a Facebook live on this in my private group just a little bit ago. So be sure to check that out so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm I'm definitely a visual learner. So this test sets itself apart from other stool tests you might get from your doctor because it is literally the most comprehensive stool test I've seen. And instead of just relying on a human and a microscope, they run DNA testing to ensure the accuracy of the results, right? There's a thing called human error for a reason. And so just having a human behind a microscope leaves a lot of stuff on the table potentially, right? If they miss something, right? Or they misinterpret something. So the DNA testing for the bacteria and things, the parasites and all that really, really sets this test apart. So this test looks at, you know, pathogenic bacteria, bad bacteria, right? Viruses, parasites, protozoa, opportunistic bacteria, uh, bacteria that's been actually correlated with autoimmunity in the medical literature. Uh, looks at H. pylori, which is a really uh, common bacterial overgrowth in the stomach for people under a lot of stress. And it looks at the balance of our beneficial bacteria. You might know these as probiotics, okay? So it also (laughs) looks at our overall digestive function by including markers for pancreatic function, inflammation uh, in the colon itself, um, how well our immune system is working in our digestive tract, right? Because 60 to 80 percent of our immune system is actually located inside of our gut. Um, And it also looks at how effectively we're detoxing, if there's any blood present in the stool, right? Um, Whether or not we're reacting to gluten, super interesting. And it can evaluate whether or not we might have leaky gut or intestinal permeability through a marker called zonulin. So it's, it's literally my favorite test, and I also recommend getting this one done annually since we're exposed to so much, and gut health is really the foundational pillar to our overall health in general, okay? All right, so let's briefly talk about food sensitivity testing because there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of people relying way too heavily on it instead of using it as the tool that it is, okay? So with food sensitivity testing, there are several different labs. My favorite ones are KBMO, KBMO, and MRT. And I'll just share about KBMO here because that's the one that I use and I'm most familiar with. So I really like this this lab because 
in addition to the typical IgG testing, that's immunoglobulin G, which is associated with a delayed hypersensitivity reaction, also known as a food sensitivity reaction, um, but they also check for the formation of immune complexes, which can really help narrow down the actual food triggers way more effectively instead of just getting results back where literally everything seems to be lit up on the results. If you've had a food sensitivity test, you might know what I'm talking about. So this test in combination with the GI map can give us a really good idea of how to heal your gut in the most effective and efficient way because we can actually create the healing environment necessary while we're dealing with controlling the bad bugs, increasing the good bugs, and restoring digestive function overall. I absolutely love it. All right. The Dutch Complete Test. So this is my go-to test for hormones and adrenal assessment. If you're postmenopausal, then skip the hormones <laughs> and just do the adrenal portion, okay? The reason I love this test is because it actually maps out your hormone cascade. So you can see what types of estrogens your body favors, uh, where there might be issues with toxic estrogen buildup in the system, and also how well your body is able to clear those estrogens and any excess androgens, so androgens are like male hormones like testosterone, um, how, how to clear them through methylation and other biochemical pathways. So it's really, really, really informative. <laughs> if you are a cycling woman, you know, if you are uh, planning to get pregnant, if you are having difficulties getting pregnant, um, if you are the age at which you can get pregnant, um, I recommend doing this test during the mid luteal phase of your cycle. So that's the middle of your, the second half of your cycle. So if your cycle is uh, 28 days, then you would aim to collect your sample between days 19 and 21, 22 ish. If your cycle is longer or shorter than 28 days, just move those days accordingly, okay? So I also love their 24-hour cortisol test because it maps out this beautiful curve and you can see, you know, whether or not your cortisol is too high or too low and at what times of day that might be happening. Super important, especially with um, when you have fatigue, um, issues with energy, you know, afternoon fatigue, you hit that wall at 2.30 p.m. Um, maybe you're having sleep issues, trouble falling asleep, trouble staying asleep. All of this can be related to your cortisol curve, okay? So next is the organic acids test, which I run through Genova. And this test is great to take a deeper look into your detox pathways, also cellular communication, how well your cells are actually making energy and your neurotransmitter balance. So things that can affect our mood quite drastically. There are also some markers on this test that we can cross-reference with the GI map to rule out things like SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So I love this test to really fine-tune our protocol. All right, and finally... I also offer functional genomics testing through Utrients, and this is a more, more comprehensive approach to genetic evaluation than something like a 23andMe. So 23andMe only tests for SNPs or small, uh, sorry, single nucleotide polymorphisms. So instead of just looking at the presence of one variant of one marker, Functional genomics looks at the broader pathways. It also looks at insertions and deletions, which is not done with the 23andMe. Um, but by looking at these broader pathways, you can literally take that information and formulate a plan around your specific nutritional needs, uh, daily routines, believe it or not, emotional balance, uh, targeted nutrient therapy, which exercise is best for you your body and your metabolism and and quite a bit more it's it's really been transform like transformational for me so I'll be sharing a podcast within the next month or two where I have my results interpreted so if you want to tune into the deep and dark secrets of my DNA uh, definitely tune into that one I think you might find that interesting 
All right, so I hope that was valuable. If you want to learn more about this topic and grab my full list of functional blood chemistry markers, be sure to grab my guide. It's called My Labs Are Normal, But I Still Feel Off. Um, I'll link to that in the show notes. And then let me know what you thought about this episode. You know, what labs have you had done in the past? Do you feel like they were actually valuable and actionable or just a total waste of your time? So hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM, or, you know, take a screenshot of you listening and tag me at wealthy woman underscore that's w-e-l-l-t-h-y w-o-m-a-n underscore otherwise tune in next week as we dive into november and the theme of nourish and restore i'll be covering topics around adrenal function stress sleep rhythms and how you can optimize your energy and mental focus during the holidays so i will chat with you next week All right, ladies, thank you for listening to another transformational episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? (laughs) You know my mission is to help inspire and empower women to share their gifts, better serve their clients, and show up even more for the people they love. So if you enjoyed this episode, leave an awesome review so more women can find us and join us in creating a life of wealth.